There have been rumors of an Olivia Rodrigo and Taylor Swift fallout for quite some time. I've pretty much been aware of this rumor since it first began after the success of Sour, Olivia's debut album. You know, it's not something people necessarily want to hear given their past alignment, but the stuff that's been speculated on does seem genuinely believable. I remember the week of Sour's release, Swifties attacked Olivia for sending a PR package of her album to Northwest. Which is ridiculous and also says something about stan mentality and how some stans feel they have the right to police certain aspects, or expecting young Olivia to take on a beef that's not hers. I found it utterly ridiculous and I did not like any of the backlash she got for that. And if I was in Olivia's shoes, that definitely would have been a wake up call for me to distance myself from someone like Taylor Swift. Because her fans and her are just a towering amount of influence. And at the end of the day, I'm sure she wants to be seen and viewed as her own artist, not just a little Taylor Swift minion. Olivia even did promo for Taylor's Fearless re-recording, where Taylor referred to Olivia as one of her kids, which was definitely beneficial, having Taylor Swift post her at the time of her own commercial breakout. But at that point, you know, things could come off a bit too integrated. And before we dive deeper, I want to say I do hear the Taylor Swift influence in Olivia, but I'm not sure if it's enough to say she's a Taylor Swift copycat or clone or the next Taylor Swift, as some people have been saying. I see her more as a cultivation of multiple different influences. Olivia Rodrigo is much more edgier and explicit than a young Taylor Swift ever was. She also takes more sonic risk earlier on. Taylor didn't curse on record until like her eighth album. I hear a lot of Lord and Olivia sonically, especially the way she does her harmonies, and some of her songs sound like they were literally built out of the soundscapes of pure heroin and melodrama. I also think she has a few similarities with fellow Dan Nigro collaborator Conan Gray, and lyrically I do hear the Taylor influence, but her overall edginess might at times resemble the likes of Avril Lavigne or Hayley Williams more than Taylor Swift. Olivia's debut, as successful as it was, was marred with a bit of controversy as it pertains to sampling. Olivia did admittedly interpolate Taylor's New Year's Day on her song, One Step Forward, Three Steps Back. Then things got even more chaotic once Taylor received a credit on Olivia's single Deja Vu to avoid getting sued. The same happened with her song Good For You in which Paramore was given a credit for its vague similarities. Although Olivia is admittedly inspired by these acts, it's hard to say if these artists actually weren't writing credits on her songs. In retrospect, honestly, I don't think they did. The chord progressions and delivery in both Cruel Summer and Misery Business can be found in a million other songs as well. But in a post Blurred Lines music business, credits will be given out to avoid long drawn out lawsuits. And a lot of people are painting this as Olivia just blatantly copying people. But it's not unique to Olivia, Taylor Swift is also guilty of this as well. For instance, the parallels on Wildest Dreams chorus and Without You by Lana Del Rey are uncanny. Same with Starlight by Taylor and Don't Trust Me by 303, or Take Me to Church by Josier and Don't Blame Me, or even You Were Meant for Me by Jewel and The Best Day. Some of these songs which have even more similarities than Cruel Summer and Deja Vu. The point is, pop music is formulaic, there will always be some vague or even extremely close similarities, but not every similarity warrants a credit. But unfortunately, that's the current state of the music industry. I do think Olivia is an artist that wore her influences on her sleeve during her debut effort, but I still find it unfair that she was discredited as a writer for these faulty, money-hungry songwriting royalty claims. And that's not to say Olivia's writing is faultless, because it's certainly not, but her being a young creative and having people discredit that, I think was definitely unfair. On Paramore's end, it was all the labels doing. In fact, Hayley Williams spoke out about it. It's not clear if Taylor Swift had anything to do with getting credits on Deja Vu. Although, Olivia's producer seemed to allude to something saying, it seems like people get funny about things when songs become really popular. Olivia herself seemed to voice frustration over copying allegations saying, It was really frustrating to see people discredit and deny my creativity. Olivia seemed to distance herself far away from the excessive fangirling in interviews and even dodging questions about Swift. 
love all your posts. I mean, you did post about Taylor Swift. What are the conversations like between you two when she's texting you? Yeah, um, I mean, it's so cool like to have people that you've looked up to your whole life suddenly become your peers. And you know, so many people yeah. are so kind to me. Like Billie Eilish and Halsey, they're all like so sweet. And it's just so nice to be, you know, uh, in an industry where I feel like women can support each other. Yeah. Rumors for this world once Rodrigo had an interview with Alanis Morissette, where Alanis said, there was a lot of bullying and a lot of jealousy and a lot of people whom I adored my whole life being mean girls. And she was talking about her rise to fame and what Rodrigo agreed and said, same. People also took notice that Taylor placed Sabrina Carpenter, the one rumored to be the blonde girl in driver's license as an opening act on her heiress tour. Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo have not publicly interacted since the deja vu fiasco, which is a bit odd and of course people would notice. They went from interacting and posting each other constantly to nothing. Now the rumors seem to have intensified with the release of Olivia Rodrigo's song Vampire. The song is set up a bit ambiguously, you'd expect it to be about a romantic relationship given Olivia's history, but nothing in the song explicitly points to a romantic relationship in the same way that songs like Driver's License, Good For You, and Deja Vu do. Hate to give you the satisfaction asking how you're doing now, how's the castle built off people you pretend to care about? And then in the chorus she says, I used to think I was smart, but you made me look so naive. The way you sold me for parts as you sunk your teeth into me. Bloodsucker, fame fucker, bleeded me dry like a goddamn vampire. Some have speculated that the lyric went for me and not her cause the girls your age know better is a double meaning for her romantic relationship and her rumored fallout with Taylor Swift. A source close to Rodrigo told People Magazine that it's not about her ex-boyfriend Adam Faze. The song isn't about Adam Faze, says the insider, which is kind of a weird thing to point out unless you wanted to make the actual meaning of the song more clear. Or another reasonable speculation is that this whole beef narrative could be something simply to drum up interest, a PR move. Driver's License was propelled by drama as well. That doesn't mean it isn't a relatable, well-crafted depiction of teenage heartbreak on its own, but narratives, drama, and scandals help sell the message at times. Personally, I do believe something happened behind the scenes because the interaction on both ends went from 100 to zero. But I will say this, Olivia is a young artist and she likely doesn't want to have her artistic identity be in the shadows of someone else. Stance can be vicious, parasocial, and delusional. There were stance that felt Olivia owed something to Taylor and she doesn't. She's inspired by her and it stops there. And while Olivia is trying to build her own fan base and own identity, it's probably best that she does distance herself. And she likely didn't learn the importance of that until she had the success that she had. One thing's for sure though, Olivia Rodrigo's presence and career doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon.